right, so we're continuing our practice of uh, factoring trinomials whose leading coefficient is something other than 1. Now, for these particular examples, um, not only is the leading coefficient not 1, uh, but these involve more than one variable, right? And maybe a GCF, so we, can, we always need to look for that. Okay, so in this first example of 4x squared plus 7xt minus 2t squared, uh, I'm looking for a GCF, so among the numbers with 4, 7, and 2, um, 7 and 2 are both prime and um, see 2 divides 4 but it doesn't divide 7, so there's nothing we can pull out there. Um, I'm looking at the variables, the first two terms have an x but the last one does not, the last two terms have a t but the first one does not, so there's no GCF to pull out here. Okay. Um, now, uh, because the leading coefficient is not 1, I'm going to go ahead and employ the AC method here, right? So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, right? Now, what are we looking for here? We want two numbers that give us negative 8 and add to give us 7, right? That's the coefficient on the middle term. So I want factors of 8, and I'm thinking, well, 8 and 1, right, the difference of that uh, would be 7, and one of them has to be negative, right? So if, if, the, if um, the last term is negative here, uh, then that means one of our numbers has to be negative and one of them has to be positive. So I would vote for negative 1 and positive 8, right? Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, negative 1 plus 8 is positive 7. Okay, so with those numbers, the negative 1 and the 8, I'm going to rewrite the middle term. So I have 4x squared plus, oh sorry, I've got a negative 1, right? So minus xt, right, plus 8xt minus 2t squared. All right. So notice what I did here. The middle term, instead of just having an x, I have an xt, right? But I'm still taking those two factoring numbers uh, and uh, using them to split apart that middle term. Okay, so now group them, the first two terms and the last two terms. From the first grouping, what can I pull out? Well, they both have an x, right? So I can pull an x out. So what does that leave? 4x minus t when I pull a, an x out of there. In the second grouping I can pull out a 2 for sure, right, and also a t, so I can pull out 2t and what will be left over? 2t times 4x would give me 8xt and 2t times negative t gives negative 2t squared. Okay, now What's common to both of the terms? Well, 4x minus t, right? So I'm going to factor out 4x minus t from both terms, and remaining will be x plus 2t. Let's check this. So, of course, uh, the checking process just involves foiling, starting, what we, starting with what we ended with and seeing if we get what we be began with. Okay, so I've got 4x minus t times x plus 2t. Okay, I'm going to come down here since I'm running out of room. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times 2t is plus 8xt. Negative t times x is minus xt. And negative t times 2t is minus 2t squared. Okay, so you should recognize that expression, right, from what we started with there. And uh, we're going to clean up the middle terms, right? 8xt minus xt is plus 7xt, right, minus 2t squared. All right, so 4x squared plus 7xt minus 2t squared, is that what we started with? Yes, indeed. Okay, great. So, uh, let's do this next one, 12x squared y squared minus 12xy minus 45. Okay, so I'm looking at all of those numbers there, and I'm thinking to myself, um, is there something I can pull out? Um, 45 isn't divisible by 2, but 12 is also divisible by 3 and 4. 
45 is divisible by 3, right? 3 times 15. Okay, so let's pull a 3 out. We don't have any variables to pull out either, right? So when we pull a 3 out, we'll be left with 4x squared y squared minus 4xy minus 15. So now, I know there's a lot of variables going on there, but let's just concentrate on the numbers for a minute. Since the leading coefficient is 4, which is not 1, we're going to use the AC method. And 4 times negative 15 is negative 60, right? Okay, and we want to know what two numbers multiply to give us negative 60 and add to give us negative 4. That's the coefficient on the middle term. Okay, so let's think about those factors. Um, the most obvious one I think of is 6 and 10, and the difference between 6 and 10 is 4. Now, 60 is negative, right? So one of the numbers has to be negative. So if we've got 10 and 6, we would want negative 10 plus 6, right, to get negative 4, right? Negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4, but negative 10 times 6 is negative 60. Okay, so let's rewrite the middle term. term. Again, don't lose the GCF there, so I'm going to have 4x squared y squared minus 10xy plus 6xy minus 15. Okay, so now do the factor by grouping. Group the first two terms and also group the last two terms. All right, so I'm going to change my parentheses up so it's clearer. Uh, 4x squared y squared minus 10xy. Okay, what can we pull out of there? Um, 4 doesn't divide 10, but 2 does, right? So we can pull a 2 out. And what's also common in terms of variables, so we can pull an x out and also a y, right? So um, 2 times 2 is 4, right? If we pulled an x and a y out of x squared, y squared, so x and y remain. Um, if we pull a 2 out from 10, we get minus 5 there, right? So 2xy times negative 5 is negative 10xy, yeah. Okay, and then in this last grouping, 6xy minus 15, um, 6 doesn't divide 15, but 3 does, right? 3 goes in bo into both of those. So I'm going to pull 3 out. 3 times 2xy gives us 6xy, and 3 times minus 5 gives minus 15. Okay, so now, okay, so what's common to both of those terms? The 2xy minus 5, so I'm going to have 2xy minus 5, and then when we factor that out, what do we have left? 2xy plus 3. Nice. Okay, let's check it. Start with what we began with, uh, 3 times 2xy minus 5 times 2xy plus 3. All right, so leave that GCF alone uh, and just do the foiling first. 2xy times 2xy is 4x squared y squared. 2xy times 3 is plus 6xy. Negative 5 times 2xy is minus 10xy. Negative 5 times 3 is minus 15. Okay. So now I'm going to combine like terms in the middle there. 6xy minus 10xy is minus 4xy minus 15. You can see that foiling in reverse, right? So then distribute the 3 back through. So we get 12x squared y squared. I don't know where my squared went. Okay. 12x squared y squared minus 12xy. minus 45. Okay, is that the expression that we started with? Yes, it is. Okay, good. These are good practice problems to be doing.